So in solving systems of equations, so far we can solve them by graphing. There's one way to solve a system of equations. What else can we do to solve a system of equations? Addition. Substitution. And there's one more way. It was the subject of section 12.4. Yeah, with matrices. So we use the inverse matrix. So four ways to solve a system of equations is obviously not enough. So we have to introduce yet another method. And that other method is going to be called Kramer's rule. So that's where we're heading is another way to solve systems of equations. But before we get there, we've got to learn a couple other things. We've got to learn some building blocks to implementing Kramer's rules. And those building blocks are determinants, 2 by 2 and then 3 by 3 determinants. So let me discuss a 2 by 2 determinant. So what it is, it's kind of like a matrix of numbers, but instead of writing it with kind of square brackets, we write it like an absolute value. So A, B, C, and D. And a determinant is going to be a way to combine all these numbers and get one number. So those four numbers are going to be combined. We'll end up with, end up with one number. So how do you find the determinant of this? Well, it's going to be the product going down, so A times D minus the product going up, which is C times B, but tradition has it that we write this in alphabetical order. So B times C. Okay, so not so bad. Let's practice a couple two-by-two two determinants. We'll start with problem number 20. So 10 and 15, and 15 and 5. Now, if you need to take out a calculator, that's fine. We've got plenty of them around here. The product going down is 10 times 5, which is 50, minus the product going up, which is 15 times 15. So 50 minus 225 gives me negative 175. And that's it. That's all there is to it in the 2 by 2 determinant. Now again, what this is building to is a, a different way to solve 2 by 2 systems of equations. So, or 2 by 2 or 3 by 3, basically any size that we want. Although generally speaking, we don't apply Kramer's rule to very big systems of equations at all. It's just kind of a nice mechanical way to solve systems of equations. Let's try problem number, eh, problem number 26. The thing that you have to be careful of when you're working with determinants is the signs. So 20 and negative 3, 20 and negative 3. It's very easy to make a mistake in writing these things out. It's especially easy when your determinant has a bunch of negative numbers in it. So, let's take a look at the product going down. What's the product going down? Negative 60 minus negative 60 again. And that double negative becomes a plus. So, what's the overall answer? Yes, nice, zero. Okay, let's maybe see where that can be applied. We apply this in something called Kramer's Rule. And I'll write it out for the 2 by 2 case. Do you remember the quadratic formula? 
What was the quadratic formula for? Anyone? What did the quadratic formula do for you? Wow. This isn't good. Come on, this is live, all right? So, quadratic formula was kind of a mechanical way to solve these things. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. It was just plug and chug. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. It's just, okay, I want an answer, plug it in, and get it. Kramer's rule is kind of that way, except for systems of equations. So let me write out a general system of equations, AX plus BY equals C. DX plus EY equals F. That sounds pretty cool. So this is a generic systems of equations. And I want to solve that system of equations. I want to get the values for X and for Y. So first things first. We're going to have to calculate a series of determinants. So the first one is going to be the determinant of the matrix of coefficients. So I'll call that D, and it's going to be this determinant, A, B, D, and E. I'm also going to need two more determinants. I need one that I'm going to call dx. And for dx, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the coefficients of x by these numbers on the right-hand side. So these numbers here, this column here, is at first going to replace the coefficients of x to get my next determinant, and then I'm going to replace the coefficients of y to get the one after that. So the first one's going to look like this. We're going to have C and F replacing A and D. And then the rest of that's the same. So the rest of that is just going to be B and E. Let's try and repeat that and get the last of our determinants, dy. We're going to do pretty much the same thing, except this time we're going to be replacing the coefficients of y by that right-hand side. So instead of b and e, I'll have c and f. What's going to be in the first column? Good, a and d. So basically, one at a time, the first column and then the second column is going to get replaced by that right-hand side. I'm going to get all three of these determinants. Well, that doesn't give me my solution yet. My solution comes from this. X is dx over d and y is dy over d. That's my solution. So don't forget to do this step at the very end of your problem because that's where you're going to get the values of x and y that solve the equation. Okay, so let's practice that. We'll start with problem number eh, we'll start with problem number 40, kind of a gentle one. And then maybe we'll work up to the one that we we worked on at the start of class. So problem number 40. X minus Y equals 4. And 2X plus Y equals 5. Now, for a lot of the problems on the exam, I'll just say solve the system. If I said solve it, 
Kramer's Kramer's rule is probably the last thing that I would do here. <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of work here. But the reason for applying Kramer's rule here is because I want to get you introduced to it. So let's find a few things here. First, we'll start with D, the determinant of the matrix of coefficients. So what are the coefficients here in problem number 40? One. All right, some of you are going down, some of you are going sideways. So one, negative one. And then what else? Two and one. So that's D. Let's also find DX and DY. See if you can't figure those out yourself before I write them down. What you want to do one at a time is replace, uh, you know, I said that's D and I wrote DX, my bad. What you want to do is one at a time replace the columns here and here by that 4 and 5. So Taylor, do I have a volunteer for DX, please? Four and five. Perfect. Thank you. Mariah, do I have another volunteer for DY? Good. One, two, and four and five. All right. Thank you for being my volunteers. Volunteer, of course, in quote. Okay. Let's calculate these determinants. D is going to be the determinant uh, created by taking this product going down. So 1 times 1 is 1 minus the product going up. What's the product going up? Negative 2. So overall, I get 3 for D. Let's keep going. Product going down. 4, product going up, negative 5. The easiest place to make a mistake in these is making a mistake with the sign here. Because a lot of people will say, oh, 4 minus 5. It's really 4 minus negative 5. What I would suggest is that when you're doing these things, before you do the product going up, write the negative sign. And then work the product going up. That way you're less likely to forget that double negative. So that double negative makes it a 9. The last one, the product going down, is 5, minus the product going up is 8, so I get negative 3. Am I all done with this one now? No. I still have to find x and y. So let's do that. x is dx over d, which is 9 over 3 y is dy over d, which is negative 3 over 3, which would be negative 1. So there's my two uh, parts of my solution, my x and my y. If you look it up in the answer key, you'll probably see it written as 3, negative 1, like that. So that's what you'll find in the answer solution. How are we looking on problem number 40? Let me give you some review. You've got a test on Monday. Is this system of equations consistent or inconsistent? Consistent. Why? Yeah, because we found a solution, right? Is it dependent or independent? Independent. These two are different lines. If I graph this, got my favorite website, Desmos. If I graph that, would these lines cross each other? We're at? Yeah, 3, negative 1. Exactly that place. So, so my two equations were x minus y equals 4. 
and 2x plus y equals 5. 5, there we go. So there we go, exactly where we predicted it would be, 3, negative 1. Nice. Let's do another one. Uh, do you want kind of a, a gradual warm-up, or do you want to jump over to that ugly problem that we left on the right side of the board? Gradual? All right. All right. So I, I, I mix messages. Only, only two people voted. Let's do another relatively easy one. Uh, that'd be problem number, hmm, I'll let you choose, 42 or 46. 46 is a little bit more of a step up. All right, 46. All right, good, let's go for 46. Five X plus three Y equals 72. Three X plus five Y equals 56. So not necessarily a really friendly one to do by either of the methods that we have so far in terms of the addition method or substitution. If you're going to do this by, say, the addition method, I'd take the top equation and multiply by 3, the bottom equation and multiply by negative 5. But you'd get some pretty big numbers. So this is leading to a desire for something else, something, say, mechanical. And one, one mechanical approach is Kramer's rule. So let's set up Kramer's rule. I want D dx and dy. So see if you can't set those up. We've done a couple problems like this, so see what you can come up with. want to get comfortable figuring out these determinants because when we move this up to the 3 by 3 case you want to memorize that pattern. So Kwong, maybe you can start us off please. What's D going to be? What numbers are going to go in here? Good, 5, 3, 3, 5, good. Uh, Bless you. Norman? All right, 72, 56, 3 and 5. Nice. Cody, last one? Nice. So one at a time. This column is going to replace first this column, then this column. Are you getting comfortable with that pattern? Because we're going to have to extend that to higher dimensions when we start working with 3 by 3 systems of equations. Let's work with D. So it's going to be product going down is 25 minus product going up gives me 16. Oh, boy. Product going down here is going to be 360. Minus product going up is 168. So what, 192? Somebody check me on my arithmetic. I was never very good at math. Uh, we okay there? Okay, thanks. Product going down here is 280 minus 216. So 64. Yay. Well, let's find x. It's going to be dx over d, 192 over 16 is 12, and 64 
all over 16 is going to be 4. So 12 and 4. Now quite often I ask people to prove that they got the right answer. And, and a lot of times what happens is people will solve the, the same problem again as their proof. It's not, not quite what I want. What else do you think you could do to prove that you got the right answer for this equation? Yeah, plug in 12 and 4 and make sure it works in both equations. That's all I'd be looking for there. So, okay. Uh, do you want to do that ugly one over there now? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> joy, oh, joy. Cool. All right, so I'm going to have to read me that one so that... Uh, I can get it up here on the board. So we want to do the two by two system. Uh, it starts with negative 85 B. So all right. Yay. Now, I think we decided that we could divide this, this equation by 3, right? So let's make our life a little bit easier and do that. So I have negative 85B plus 12C equals negative 244. And then negative 13B plus 55C equals, what was it, 288? 388. Thank you, 388. All right, so somewhat smaller numbers, but still the same idea. We're still going to apply Kramer's rule to that system of equations. So I'll start out with matrix, or is it the determinant of matrix D, the coefficients. What are going to be the coefficients in this one, Dakota? Mm-hmm. Perfect. So my guess is that we might want a calculator for this one. Thanks, Dakota. Garrett, how about the next one? We'll call it DA, or no, we'll call it DB. Very nice. Thank you, sir. And... Julia, how about DC? <laughs> Perfect. So let me kind of catch up to you. So negative 85, negative 244. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of calculator work here. But... The good thing is that it's mechanical. It's just kind of plug and chug. And that's what Kramer's rule has going for it. Actually, it has a little bit more going for it that I'll talk about in association with problem number 48. For now, let's try and do uh, a little bit of work here. Negative 85 times 55. Yeah, negative 4,675 minus. Let's see, I should be able to do that one in my head. Uh, 156. Let's just double check. 13 times 12. Yeah, so minus negative 156. So negative four thousand one hundred, negative four thousand five hundred and nineteen. Is that what you guys are getting for D? Okay, thank you. Let's keep going. Negative two forty four 
times 55, Whew. negative 13,420 minus 388 times 12, 4,656. For negative 18,076. Okay. <laughs> wow. But at least this goes into this evenly. I can see that much. So negative 85 times 388. Negative 32,980 minus 13 times 244. 3172 negative 36152 whoo <clears throat> okay so let's let's do it all out if i want b the solution for b that's going to be negative 18,076 divided by negative 4,519. And isn't that special? It goes in there an even four times. Wow. Pretty sweet. How about C? Is this the number you guys got for C? Okay, thanks. So negative 36,152 divided by... 46 or 4519 negative 4519 I'm guessing 8 Whew. See see how nice and even it worked out isn't that awesome <laughs> All right wow Uh we will get there yeah absolutely we will get there Um I was saving that for the the happy ending right so, yeah, there are. There's definitely ways to do this on the calculator, and I will show them to you. Uh, I probably would like uh, to see either one two by two or one three by three done by hand. I don't know. We'll we'll discuss that. Uh, to finish this one up, uh, what was one of the original problems or one of the original equation like five uh, a? All right, so we can take B. We don't need to worry about C. We can take B and plug it in here. So it'd be 5A plus 3 times 4 equals 22. That's 12. If I subtract 12 from both sides, I get 5A equals 10. So A equals 2. See how nice and even that worked out? Wow, that's special. All right, <laughs> some of you are catching my sarcasm here. Uh, it did work out even, but it was a lot of work, okay? Now, I guess one of the good things about Kramer's rule is that it helps us determine very quickly if there's going to be a problem. Now, we talked earlier about some things being consistent, inconsistent, dependent, independent. What we like to have happen is, you know, the equivalence of two lines crossing each other. And that point of intersection is going to be your solution. So that would be a consistent, independent system. But that may not happen. So that's the, the nice case. That's the first case. What else could happen when you're graphing a system of equations? Parallel lines. In which case there's no solution. It's inconsistent, yet independent. And then the last possibility is you could have two lines that overlapped. So really there's there's kind of uh, the one uh, baby bear kind of solution, right? The one really nice thing. Uh, the bed's just right, the bed's too hard, the bed's too soft. All right, this one's just right. That's what we like. But what does Kramer's rule say in these other cases? What's going on there? Well, let's take a look at problem number 48. We're not going to go, we're not going to have to go too far with problem 48. 
5x minus 4y equals 20, and 10x minus 8y equals 30. I think real quickly you're going to see that there's going to be a problem. And let's start by figuring out what d is. 5, negative 4, 10, negative 8. Oops. Thank you. So what's, what's d going to equal? Zero. Now let's keep in mind that when we calculate our solutions, so right away without having to do a whole lot of work, we're alerted to the fact that there's a problem. There's no solution. We're not, we're not going to get our nice case here. We can't. It's either going to be one of these. Either the two lines are parallel or they're the same. Now for the 2 by 2 case, it's pretty easy to see. If you take the first equation and multiply it by 2, on the left-hand side, you get the same thing. Do you get the same thing on the right-hand side, though? No. What that's meaning is that these two are parallel. They're not the same. The only time that you're going to get this situation is if one of these is an exact multiple of the other. So in order for this to be a dependent situation, what number would I have to have here? 40. All right, because it's 30, these are parallel lines, there's no solution. Now, formally, if you wanted to conclude, gee, that this is inconsistent, independent, with Kramer's rule, what needs to happen is that d is 0, and at least one of these, either dy or dx, is something other than 0. And if that's the case, then you conclude it's inconsistent independent. If they're all 0, then it's dependent. It's a dependent case. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of interpreting the rest of it based on Kramer's rule. Here's what you should know. If d equals 0, there's a problem. If d equals 0, it says that this first option really isn't an option. You're not going to get a unique solution. You're either going to get one of these or one of these. So, And that, that you're going to have to spend a little time investigating. So am I clear about what I'm expecting from Kramer's rule? It's a nice thing about Kramer's rule, too. Because if you can spot that this determinant is zero right away, you don't have to solve the rest of the equation. That's it. You know there's not going to be a unique solution. So there's good reasons for understanding that systems of equations are related to determinants. Now, is that my ideal way to solve a system of equations? No. Far from it. Uh, it's better than graphing, but it's, it's not ideal. Let's move our way into three by three systems of equations and solving them with Kramer's rule. Now, before we get there, though, we're going to have to understand and solve uh, three by three determinants. Before I go there, is there any questions on um, what you call? Is there any questions for two by two cases? Kramer's rule. Okay, so let's, um, let's calculate some more determinants in the 3 by 3 case. So 3 by 3 determinants. And the examples that I use, the first few examples that I'm going to use, really aren't going to be in the book, but they're good examples nonetheless. So let's just use these. 
and I'm sorry, but I'm not I'm not going to kind of write down the nice generic two by two or three by three example like I did earlier. So we're just going to have to learn this one by example. So six one negative one two five and negative one and one two and one. There are literally books written on calculating determinants, different ways to calculate them. Some really fancy, some uh, more brute force, force uh, and I think some iterative methods too. I mean, it can get really involved. You're just getting just a little tiny slice of this. I'm going to keep it to one method, and I keep it pretty simple here for us. So what we're going to do when we calculate a 3x3 three three determinant is it's called expansion. We're going to expand across this row. And one at a time, we're going to create 2x2 two two determinants that get multiplied by the elements of that row. So how's that going to look? Well, let's start with the 6. If I take that 6 and I cross off first that row and then this column that leaves behind a 2 by 2 determinant. So I'm going to take that 6 there and multiply by this 2 by 2 determinant. So it's going to be 6 times 5, negative 1, 2, and 1. Then we're going to move over to the next element in this row and repeat that process. Now leave a space here between the one and the determinant. It's going to be one times the next determinant. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cross off this row and this time I'm going to cross off the middle column. So when I cross those things off, what's left in terms of a two by two determinant? Two, negative one, one, and one. Thank you. And let's go to the last one here. The last one is negative one. Again, leave some space here. And we want to repeat this process one last time. Cross off that row and that column and tell me what's going to be left. Two, five, one, and two. Okay, there's one little thing that we got to take care of, one little detail. And that one little detail is this. I need to know how to combine these. Do I add them? Do I subtract them? Do I multiply them? And the pattern that always exists is this. It's always a plus, minus, plus. So that one's a plus, this one's a minus, that one's a plus. And that's how we're going to combine these. So, a fair amount of work for the setup, but let's take it from here. It's going to be 6 times the product going down, which is 5, minus the product going up, which is negative 2. Minus 1, I'm just going to leave it as, well, and I'll write the minus 1 there. You don't have to. Product going down is 2. What's the product going up in that middle determine it. Negative one. negative one. Plus negative one, well I'll just write that as minus one. Vincent, help me out with this one if you would please. Product going down, product going up. Good. So that's six times seven minus one times three minus 1 times minus 1. So 42 minus 3 
plus 1 is 40. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Are we all right with that first example? It's a fair amount of calculation. I understand that. I'm very conscious of how I assign these types of problems. But is there something I went over maybe too fast you want me to discuss again? Yeah. Yeah, so you cross off this row and that column. So that leaves you with the 2, the negative 1, the 1, and the 1. And then you do likewise for the other two elements. You cross off. How do you know which one to cross off? Which one to... Yeah. So you do it for each of these. We started with the 6. And for the 6, I cross off the first row, first row, and first column. And that left all that. For the 1, you cross off the middle column and the first row. And then likewise here, last one. First row, third column. We're going to do another one. Three. Product going down, 2 times 2 is 4. Minus the product going up, 1 times 5. All right. Thanks for the questions. Appreciate them. Let's try another one. Going to look kind of similar. So, another example here. Let's do negative 2, 2, and 5. 1, 5, and 2. Negative 1, negative 1, and 1. So the same process here that we did with the last one, we're going to expand across the top row. Do you want to try this one? Try and at least get the setup. Okay. Try and figure out what number times what determinant, plus or minus what number times what determinant, etc. Let's just see if we're getting the right matrices here, or right determinants. Lily, what should I put in the first determinant here? Good. Sadiq, how about the next one? All 
All right, great. Brandon, the last one. Nice. Two and five and five and two. What about the signs between these things? It's always going to be that plus minus plus pattern. So plus doesn't change this one. Minus changes that one. Plus doesn't change that one. So plus minus plus. So negative two. The product going down is 5 minus the product going up. Thank you. Minus the product going up is negative 2 again. Minus 1 times 2 minus negative 5. Plus negative 1 or simply minus 1 times 4 minus 25. So let's clean that up. Negative 2 times 7 minus 1 times 7 minus negative 21. So let's see, a total of 7 maybe? So minus 14, minus 7, plus 21. Uh-oh. Did we get 0? Did we get 0? Yeah, we got 0. That's okay. All right, zero. Not a problem. Whew. All right. Are you okay with uh, the second example on three by three determinants? Yes, sir. Right. The plus doesn't change this ever. So it's not going to change that number. The only number that really gets changed in this plus minus plus pattern is the middle number. Yeah. Minus and plus. Yeah. That's a good way to think of it. Yeah, but that, that first number is not going to change, nor the last number is really going to change. The only one that changes is the middle one. Okay. Time for Kramer's rule in the 3x3 three three case. So hold on to your hats because this is going to wrap up kind of quickly. 3 by 3 Kramer's rule. And I'm, well, let's see. Bless you. The pattern here is the same as it was for the 2 by 2 case. It's just gotten a little bit bigger. So let me try and look at this with you from the book. And just take a second and observe what's going on here. They've written down a generic 3 by 3 system of equations. On the right hand side of that 3 by 3 system of equations is this column of J, K, and L. So like our 2 by 2 case, you're going to start out with the matrix of coefficients. So just take all the coefficients on the left hand side, put them in a 3 by 3 matrix. Then one at a time, that column is going to replace the first column, then the second column, then the third column to get dx, dy, and dz respectively. When it's all said and done, x is dx over d, y is dy over d, z is dz over d. So, whew. okay, let's apply this to a particular 3 by 3 case. Or three by three system of equations, and that three by three system of equations is going to look like this: six x plus y minus z equals negative two. Two x. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Two x plus five y minus z. Is positive 2 and x plus 2y plus z equals 5. Now what I want us to do is just do the setup of the determinants. Let's set up d, dx, dy, and dz. 
That's all we're going to work on right now is just the setup. So let's do at least one of these or so together. Let's do D together. D is going to be the matrix of coefficients. If you're looking at this at home, you can pause the video and try and come up with D, DX, DY, DZ. D is going to be 6, 2, 1, 1, 5, and 2, negative 1, negative 1, and 1. Let's work with the other ones, starting with dx. One at a time, the columns in this determinant have to get replaced by the column on the right-hand side right here. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just simply copy this with missing columns, you know, alternating from 1, 2, and then 3. So I'll leave a column here. I'll write down 1, 5, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, and so on. Me or you? <laughs> Both. What's that? Well, I'll get to that. Oops, made a mistake. This last one should be negative 2, 2, and 5. Okay, so let's fill in these. Yes? Yeah, well, that's, that's when we evaluate the determinants. Then we still have to do that plus minus plus stuff. Okay, so how about this first one? That one's going to be negative 2, 2, and 5. And then the next one, again, negative 2, 2, and 5, and negative 2, 2, and 5, and the last one. Whew. Can someone see a serious drawback in solving a system of equations, a 3 by 3 with Kramer's rule? What's a serious, serious drawback? Oh, yeah. It takes forever. Yeah, you need like uh, three sheets of paper. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's make this a little bit easier on you. Uh, first things first, does anyone know the value of this determinant? It's 40. That's the first example that we did right here. So we already calculated one now. Yay. So that's 40. Ooh, cool. Does anyone know the value of the second determinant? Yeah. That would be the second example we just did, right? So that'd be zero. Woohoo! All right, so so life got easier by 50% there, right? Uh, let's make life even easier. Take out your calculators. Time to learn how to do this on a calculator. Now, I'm a little bit undecided what I want to do for the test. Um, there's a chance you're going to have to do at least one by hand, but probably at most one. For right now, though, Let's figure out how to do this on a calculator. So let's calculate dy based on a calculator. What I need to do first is I need to enter matrix uh, this into one of my matrices. So do you remember that from the other day? Hit the second key, then the matrix key. Now chances are you'll have stuff there already. That's okay. Where do you want to put this one? Do you want to put this in matrix A? Doesn't matter. Let's put it in matrix A. So cursor over to the edit column with the right arrow or the left arrow and press enter. 
what are the dimensions of my matrix that I want to put in here? Three by three. So three rows, three columns. And let's enter those numbers here. So six, negative two, negative one, two, two, negative one, one, five, and one. So those are the matrix numbers associated with the determinant of dy. Once you get those entered, quit. Exit out of this. So hit the second key, then the mode key, and exit out of there. What did I want to do with those numbers? What did I want to find? Not the inverse. It's determinant, right? All right, so let's go back to the matrix menu. So I've got the names of all my matrices, but cursor one to the right. Do you see anything that looks promising? Maybe the first one, number one. So press that. But the determinant of what? What do we want to take the determinant of? Matrix A. So go back to your matrix menu, hit second, X inverse, and then just type the number one, the determinant of matrix A. Boom. There you go. 40. Nice. So that one's 40. And I'll help you. I don't, do you want to practice that one more time? Do you want to practice determinant on a calculator with DZ? Yeah, all right. Why don't you figure out what DZ is based on a calculator? I'll kind of walk around. If there's some problems or something like that, getting these things, then let me know. Okay, so you should get 120 for DZ, right? Now, as far as your solution is concerned, X is DX over D. So 
0 over 40 is 0. Y is DZ over D, or excuse me, DY over D. So Y is 1, and Z is 120 over 40, which is 3. So overall, you get the solution of 0, 1, and 3 for this system of equations. Now typically what I do on an exam for this problem is I'll give you this system of equations and I'll give you a little bit more. I'll probably give you something like thank you. I'll give you say D um, dx and maybe dz. So I'll give you the values for three out of those four determinants, which means really you need to do two things. You need to set up this determinant and calculate it. Now I'm not going to tell you which of these you're going to have to find. So you have to know and understand Kramer's rule. But I'm not going to make you do four of these. That would be a waste of your time and my time, Harry. I think you can show me that you understand the method if you can come up with you know, any one of these. So, and then finish the problem. Please don't stop with just the determinant. You need to tell me what X, Y, and Z is. But if you look at an old exam, you'll see a problem just like that. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm undecided in my mind if I want you to actually do that part by hand or if it's good enough to show you on the calculator. So, I'll let you know. Is there any other questions or thoughts on Kramer's rule here? Okay. Let me give you some homework for this section, and then we'll take a quick break. So for homework, 17 through 23, 27 through 33, 43, 45, 47, 55, 59, and 61. So that's section 12.5. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes.